begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so the Gospel from St. John, chapter 4, verses 43 to 54, goes this way. We're going to read part of it. Okay? There was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. <laughs> Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that the boy would live. Then he asked them, when he began to recover. They told him, the fever left him yesterday about one in the afternoon. The father realized that, that, that just at that time, Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So it was one in the afternoon when he began to recover. It was about the same time that Jesus had told him, your son will live, you may go home. And he, the royal official, and his whole household came to believe. Now, this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. So let's recall what we have learned about faith here. Jesus tells this royal official, who was most likely a pagan, not a Jew, must be a Roman uh, official, right? And you don't expect the Romans, to have faith in Jesus Christ because they're pagans. Um, so this royal official must have just heard from the grapevine, so to speak, right? From the people uh, that Jesus was a miracle worker, that Jesus was, um, you know, healing the sick. And in fact, that's how Jesus proved to John, Right? to the disciples of John the Baptist and to John himself, that he was indeed the Messiah. What did he tell the disciples of John? Well, tell John what you've seen, right? The blind see, the lame walk, see, etc. In other words, miracles for him to understand that, yes, I am the Messiah. So he was a royal official who must have been hearing all about these things and therefore wanted to ask Jesus for this favor. For his own son. But then Jesus tells him, you know, you people, you, you, you only want to believe me when I show you signs about who I really am, right? So anyway, he dismissed the, the official like, okay, just, just go home. I don't need to go with you. Just go home. And if you believe what I'm telling you, then your son will be healed. Okay? So that kind of um, dismissal, so to speak, that Jesus does to this man and the consequent behavior that this man executed, which is he obeyed Jesus and just went home, is confirmation of what we have learned about faith and about miracles some time ago. What is that? That Jesus performs miracles not so much to prove who he was, right? It's not so much to prove that, you know, yeah, I am divine, I am the Son of God, I am, I am the Messiah, 
And because I am such, then I perform miracles. No, it was not so much that, right? Rather, Jesus performed miracles for people in order to confirm their faith, right? In order to make them realize and understand that, yes, you are right in believing in me, that I am indeed the Son of God, that I am indeed the Messiah. And in order to confirm that faith of yours, I'm going to perform some miracles for you. That is why what do we hear every time our Lord happens to heal somebody, right? The stories in the gospel. What, does, what do we hear? Our Lord tells them, your faith has saved you. Your faith has healed you. In this sense, healing is not only physical, but also spiritual, the healing of the soul. That's why when he says your faith has saved you, your faith has healed you, they more or less mean synonymously the same thing, right? The healing of the soul from sin and the, as a consequence of all that healing, you know, even the healing of physical infirmities may follow. But the more important healing is the healing of the soul. So, miracles are, were performed by Jesus in order to confirm the faith of people. Now, what about this man? What happened here? See? You will realize that our Lord told him, Go. I'm not even going to accompany you. Go. Just go home. And your son will live. Now, this man who presumably was a pagan, what did he do? He believed. Because if he had not believed, he wouldn't have obeyed and gone home. Right? So there was faith included there. Maybe not supernatural faith, but human faith. Human trust. Okay? Human trust. The basic human trust that he gave Jesus to believe what he was told, just go home. Okay? Even if he felt like he was abandoned by Jesus and just dismissed, like, just go home. I'm not even going with you. Unlike the other miracles, when he was right there and performed the miracle, right? Like the, the, the other situation when he raised the, uh, the uh, dead girl, right? He went to the house of the dead girl. He went. And perform the miracle there. Okay? But in this case. He just said. Go home. He did the same thing with. This, the, the servant of Jairus. Another Roman uh, official. Jairus. right? But in the case of Jairus. He even told our Lord. Lord I am not worthy. That you come under my roof. So just say the word. And my servant will be healed. And that's exactly what happened. Our Lord, what did he do? He praised the faith of this Roman official. He praised the faith. Again, well, this guy was not a Jew. He was, so he's considered a pagan. But he had faith. He trusted. He trusted Jesus to the point where he even told Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come with me. So just say the word. Okay? So again, it tells us, it confirms for us that our Lord performed miracles to confirm the faith of people. Now, so that's very important, right? Very important. Now, what is this story telling us? It is a demonstration of one special element of faith. I mean, there are many dimensions of the virtue of faith. There are many dimensions to it, right? But here is one of the more important parts of faith. It is learning to trust. Learning to abandon ourselves to God. Trusting in God is a very important component of faith. In fact, trusting in God is a big manifestation that we really believe in God. Because if we are not going, if we cannot bring ourselves to trust somebody, whether it be God or whoever, it means we do not believe that that person or God himself 
can do for us what we are supposed to believe He can do for us. Right? So trust is a very important element of faith. And in this case, okay, well, let's examine. What are the things we need to trust in? What are the things we have to put our trust in? Number one would be that God has our best interest at heart. We have to put our trust in that. That God has our best interest at heart. In fact, he himself said, your father knows what you need even before you ask him, right? Your father knows you. God is your father. He knows what you need even before you ask him. Every strand of your head, hair on your head is counted, right? So what are you worried about? You know, your, your, your father... Uh, has your best interest at heart. What else? We have to trust that God knows best. We cannot outdo God in, in wisdom, in, in knowledge. He knows best. So if He is directing our lives one way or another, this way or that, you can be very sure that He's doing that on purpose. He's doing that for the purpose of, well, the third part of the trust <laughs> already. He's doing that in order to help us navigate our way to heaven. Okay? That's the third trust, part of trust. That he is leading us to heaven. And all we need to do is cooperate with God's plan. Cooperate with God's will. And that requires Trusting, trusting in the way God is steering our life, left or right, curving here or there, or going uphill or downhill. God is, the, is in the driver's seat of our lives, okay? and he is directing us to heaven. What we need to do is cooperate with God, and such cooperation is a sign of trust. So, three things. God has our best interest at heart. Okay? God knows best. And God will always lead us to heaven. And all we need to do is cooperate. And we cooperate okay? um, like, like this royal official did. Even if sometimes we feel like God abandoned us. Like this guy, he was just dismissed and said, just go home. I don't need to go with you. Just go home. And if you believe that your son will live, he will live. Sometimes we feel like that. We feel like, where is God when I needed him? You know, where is God when I need him? I mean, I'm having trouble here fighting against this temptation. I'm having trouble trying to practice this virtue. I'm having trouble dealing with my sibling or that annoying person. I have trouble with this or that. I have financial troubles. I have troubles with my job. I have troubles with my co-workers. I have troubles with my neighbors. Where is God when I need him? I think the question to ask is, where is your trust in God when you need it most? When you feel like you're abandoned when you feel like God is not around. See? When you when you feel like God told you, just go, just go your way. When you feel like you were left alone in the journey of life and you are traversing the the byways and highways of life and you are unaccompanied by the God who you thought was going to be with you always. Sometimes life can feel like that. But rest assured that as long as you're treading that path, trusting, trusting in God, having faith in God, then you're going to be like this royal official. That maybe you might feel abandoned by God, but at the end of the road, you're going to meet the servants who will tell you, 
your son lived. What you asked, what you asked Jesus from over there, okay, is getting fulfilled. The miracle is being performed for you because you trusted, because you believed, because you had faith. That is the way we should go through life, okay? Always trusting that God will have our best interest at heart, that God knows best, and that God will lead us to heaven. We just have to trust. We just have to cooperate. Okay? That's it for us. And Eva is taking her milk. So she's not going to say goodbye to us. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Let her stay there. It's okay. Okay. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow. Hopefully, everybody have a good day. Have a good start of your week. Bye-bye.